the things that you go through Seems nobody goes with you Your life's feeling kind of dry And you're just a crane, get your heart But everywhere And good morning. Welcome to Oak City Community Church. I'm sitting in for Pastor Bobby today. We do appreciate all of your prayers for him, First Lady Grace, and Oak City Church family. Today, we're going to continue our lesson in the book of Philippians, chapter number four. We're going to look at verses 14 through 19 and end with verse 19. We're on another verse that is probably quoted quite a bit and also probably misapplied quite a bit as well. We'll look at that verse today. Um, before we do that, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love and kindness, your long suffering, your patience with us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to come to share your word. We ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts and minds as you've done in the past. Teach us what you want us to know, Lord. Give us what you want us to have. And make us into the people of God. You call us to be to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 19. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. All right, so let's look at these first few verses. In verse 14, Paul says that the church of Philippi communicate with my affliction. That word communicate in the Greek uh, is koinia, and we've heard that quite a bit. And that word means to fellowship. But fellowship doesn't mean going to the fellowship hall and having some cake and punch. Fellowship means to partake and to be a sharer of whatever's going on in his life. In Paul's life, he said, communicate with my affliction. That means when Paul was in pain, when Paul was in jail, when Paul was in prison, when things were going on south in Paul's life, this church came alongside and shared in that. So when the purpose of this letter, as we talked about before, Paul is writing a thank you to them for their communicating, their sharing and participating with him in what he was going through. So when we say, oh, what a fellowship, that means if your brother, your sister, or going through some trial, you walk alongside of them. You come alongside. That's what fellowship is. And Paul says they communicated. They fellowship with him during his affliction. Now, how does that fellowship really look outside of that? Well, in verse 15, he says, you communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving. So this whole part about fellowship, once again, we see this word koinonia again in verse 15 about this fellowship. Again, they said, you know what? Paul is in need. I have something. Finally, I'm going to give this to Paul. I'm going to fellowship. I'm going to share with him. Sometimes you may do the same thing with a brother or sister of yours who is going through a, a tough stretch, let's say financially, for example, and you come alongside and help them and pay some bills and, and help them get through that. That's what fellowship really is. You come alongside your brother or sister in affliction and participate and share with them. And verse 16 they didn't just do it one time and say, we've done it and we checked the box. Verse 16 says, for even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. 
Paul was always in need. Paul was always in danger. And this church at Philippi loved Paul and they showed it tangibly by sending gifts and money and whatever Paul needed to try to help Paul. That's what fellowship really is. Now, that's the thank you from Paul. But verse 17 says, Paul says, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit may abound to your account. So Paul is saying, look, I'm not saying thank you because I really desire a gift. I, I, I didn't even remember. I said I could do all things through Christ. Which means I could continue on. God will sustain me. But I do appreciate what you've done. I do appreciate the gifts you've sent. And I'm not saying it so uh, I would benefit. I'm saying it so you would benefit. So fruit would be added to your account. Fruit will abound to your account. See, sometimes you think you're helping someone else when you give. Uh, yeah, it looks that way, and it is. But God, you're doing things so God now can add points or fruit or scores to your own account. You're going to get credit for what you're doing here when you fellowship with your brothers and sisters. I, I remember when I was... Uh, one of my first classes I took out of college and one of the old engineers was going to tell me how to be successful. And first thing he said was always pay yourself first. And I said, OK, I, I, at this point, I kind of dismissed what he said. I'm not paying myself first. What kind of deal is that? I was raised better than that. I'm not paying myself first. I'm going to pay, do something for the Lord's business first. Well, in effect, but these Philippians are doing are paying themselves first because while they are taking what they need and giving it to the apostle Paul. Paul is saying that's fruit added to your account. I didn't know I was adding fruit to my account. Yeah, you're being a blessing, but God is it sees that God sees exactly what you're doing. Because look at verse 18. Paul says, but I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you. So Paul said, I got the gifts you sent. He says, those gifts you sent wasn't just some ordinary gift. What were they, Paul? Paul says, they were an odor of sweet smell. Mm, okay. A sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. So all of a sudden, Paul takes what they gave and said, God is well-pleased with that. No, we gave it to you, Paul. No, 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 no. I know you thought you sent it to me, but God saw it, and it was a sweet smell. It's like you see the sacrifice in the Old Testament, the burnt offerings. It's a sweet smell. God sees it as a sacrifice, and it was acceptable and well-pleasing to God. You did not know you were making a sacrifice. You did not know you were making a sacrifice to God. But when you blessed the man of God, when you blessed Paul out of what you had, it was a sacrifice? Well, if it was a sacrifice, it couldn't have been stuff that was left over. It couldn't have been extra because I made a lot of money. I spent a lot of money. And look, I still got money left over. I get it to God. I help the man of God. I do things for the kingdom. That's not a sacrifice. A sacrifice is when you take what you need, because these Philippians didn't have it. But Paul makes it very clear in verse 10. He said, you know, you, uh, and if you read Acts, they kind of lost contact with Paul for a while, and, and Paul wasn't getting any gifts from them. Well, they lost contact, and they did not have the opportunity. They did not have anything to give. But when they finally got it, Paul says in verse 10, at last, you know, your care for me is flourished again, which means it finally came around now that you now you have opportunity. He said you wanted to do it, verse 10. He says, but you lacked opportunity, which means you did not have it to give, but you wanted to really badly. So when they finally got something, they sent it to Paul. And Paul was saying, that what you gave me wasn't because you had extra and overflow. That that you sent me wasn't because you was trying to figure out what to do with it. You got a big bonus. You didn't know what to do with it. No, you had, took what you needed. You needed. You personally need it, and you sacrificed. You gave that. You sent that to Paul. And when Paul says, when God saw you doing that thing, that was a sacrifice. And God didn't just look the other way. God took note of this sacrifice. So then Paul gets step back and say, let's look at what just happened here. God moved on a church at Philippi to send gifts to Paul by Epaphroditus. Okay, so you see those, those steps, right? Gifts are coming to Paul by a person named Epaphroditus. Paul turns around and says, but, wait a minute, how does but come into this? How does, you about to say, but my God shall supply all you need. How do you, why do you say but? Seem like it should be and my God. But no, it's but because of this. When they took what they needed, 
That was a sacrifice. They took what they needed and sent it to Paul. Now what happens? If they got rid of everything they needed, they are now on E. They are now empty. And now when you find yourself on empty in any area of your life, you're thinking, what's going to happen next? If my bank account is now empty, my wallet is not empty, my resources are not empty, my cupboards are now bare, what's going to happen next? You start counting the time. How many days do we have before we have to leave? How far can I go before I run out of gas? You start thinking a whole lot of things. How far can we go before we have to pull the kids out of school? How long can we go on this? Before we have to get into a shelter or a soup line, how far can we go? When you're running on E now, Paul says now that they made this sacrifice, they're on E, they're empty. So don't start thinking about what's going to happen next through the natural progression of things. That's a but there. So when you have a sac, when you make a sacrifice to the Lord, there's a but, not not an end. What's going to happen next naturally? There's a but. There's a shift. There's a conjunction there that shifts the direction you're going. You were going south already because you didn't have much and now you gave what you did have and now you have nothing now you don't need but 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 something happens but my god shall supply all your need you mean all my need every everything i just gave up and now i have a need no 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 it's not all of your needs well, you could list out all the things you need and God's gonna come back and check them all for you. No, 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 it's not that. He says, he didn't say all of your needs. He said he should supply all your need. That's exhaustive. That's everything you, every area of life that there's a need, God's gonna supply. Now, Paul said, when they gave him his gift, he said, I'm full. And that word in the Greek means fuller up. He really does mean fill her up, full, fill to the full. Paul says, I'm full. Then he says, but God shall supply all you need. Interesting, it is the same Greek word for supply. Paul says, God's going to fill you up, fill you to the full of what? That same place that I'm empty? Yeah, but not just that place. He says, all your need. So if I have a need over here that I just took and sacrificed to God, but I didn't touch these needs over here and my needs over here and my needs over here and they're all empty, Paul says God steps in and says, his God, my God, going to step in and supply all your need. The place where you gave and sacrificed? Yes. What about this place over here that's empty? That too. What about this place? That too. You mean I'm going to be running on all sinners? Yes. My God shall supply all your need. Now, many people take this and just start slinging around and say, my God's going to supply all my need. Well, let me read this again. But my God shall supply all your need. So really, when you start saying my God shall supply all my need, that's not what the Bible says. This says God's going to supply all your need. There's a certain class of people here. Who are these people? These are the believers, not just any believer. Those believers who did what? Those believers who made a sacrifice out of what? The things they needed. And they made their running on E totally empty. Now they have these empty vessels. Now God, Paul's God, my God, your God will come fill her up. All of these empty vessels, God will fill all of us up. For whom? Those who made a sacrifice. You can't go broke and stay broke in God's business. And I don't mean broke financially. I mean broke in any area of your life. You could be spiritually bankrupt, physically bankrupt, financially bankrupt, whatever the case may be, wherever you find yourself empty, emotionally empty, God can fill that vessel up. You just keep making that sacrifice that well-pleasing and acceptable unto God. Now look at the manner, or look at the way, look at the fashion in the way God fills you up. He says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. It, it didn't say he's going to supply all your need out of his riches and glory, because he, he's rich, he's wealthy. It, it, the earth is his, and the fullness thereof, and all those that dwell therein, the cattle on a thousand hills are all his. He has unsearchable riches. He did not say he's going to supply your need out of those. That would be great because he will. But he's, the, the word here, he, he will supply all your need according, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. 
Now that just kind of gave me goosebumps because he said he's going to do it according to his riches. You know, one thing that if you if you taking donations from people and and uh, someone says, okay, everyone made a donations for this charitable event, and you run into a billionaire, and they, he made a donation or she made a donation too, and someone said, did they give? Yeah, yeah, she gave it too, uh, but she gave according to her riches. Wait a minute, that means she didn't just give you out of her riches. Because anyone could do that. But according, that means, the word in the Greek means down from, which means it's a derivation. It, it's it's in a, an alignment with it. It is a function of it. So if you have a billion, if you are a billionaire and you gave me according to your riches, that means yours was way more than everyone else's because you make more, you have more. It's according to what you have. So when we talk about how God is going to bless you and supply your needs, he's going to supply those according to his riches and glory, according to that unlimited supply which means how does God do that well you look at the Bible it, it doesn't come to me where I have a need for seven eight dollars and fifty cents and you know what I got seven eight dollars and fifty cents no that, you may get seven eight dollars and fifty cents because you need seven eight dollars and fifty cents but if God is supplying that need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus you get more than seven eight dollars and fifty cents babe I'm just here to tell you God he overflows <laughs> you know, you, I went to God bless you, and they got exactly what they needed. I mean, when when Jesus fed the five thousand, how much how much food did they have? How much food did they have? Okay, two loaves and five five two fish and five loaves, and they fed five thousand. Well, if they said they fed every, all five thousand, and there was nothing left, when they got to the last person, that was just enough. They would say, "Ain't that God? No, that ain't God. That's a miracle, but that's just not you know that's not the way God does it. That's one thing, but." They had stuff left over. Now we're talking about it. Now we're talking about how, how God moves. According to his riches, oh, there were 12 baskets left because he does an overflow. Remember the, uh, I have to talk more about courting next time. But when God does this, when God does this, when God does his business and he supply all your need, all your requirements, handles your business for you, he does it according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, which means there's always an overflow, there's always abundance, there's always over and beyond when God does it. So if you have an empty vessel, and you do, we all have vessels that are empty. Let's keep applying everything we have and making that sacrifice to God. Just keep pouring into God's kingdom. Keep serving. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Even when you're running on E. Even when you're running out. Because my God will supply all your needs. That's every last one of those vessels. Every last one of them. He fill them up. Supply. Fill them up. Fill them up till they overflow. Because that's the way he does it. He'll just give you exactly what you want. Or exactly what you need. You know, when I had, a, and I told this story, and I'm going to tell it again, and I'm not through telling it, but when I had brain surgery, he told me a lot of things may happen if I survived the brain surgery. <laughs> if I survived the brain surgery, which was a high probability, they would say, fine, I felt better about that. They said, but they did say, you may not be able to hear, you may not be able to smell, you may not be able to walk, you may not have an appetite, you may you know, have to use a walker, you may have to use a, uh, a wheelchair for a while. It may have to be a whole lot of things. And you know, but when I prayed and the saints prayed, I wasn't praying about not being able to walk. <laughs> I wasn't praying about not being able to smell or eat or, or, or do any of those things. I just wanted to live. <laughs> I, just, I just want to wake up breathing. I just want, and they said, you may be not be able to see all those things. I just wanted life. And God blessed me according to his riches in glory, which means he didn't just stop at life. I didn't have to have a cane. I, I could hear. I could see. I could walk. I could talk. I did have an appetite. I could run. All of those things because it was according to his riches and glory. And that's not just all. Think about our, our sin debt. And we're running out of time, but I'm going to talk about this next time. Think about our sin debt. All we wanted to do was get our sin debt paid so we would not have an eternal death. But God sent his son to go to Calvary's cross for our sins, paid our sins. When he died on that tree, that should have been good enough. But the Bible says it was not according to just what I need, what we needed. It was according to the riches of his grace. 
And because of his grace, then we got eternal life. He got up on the third day with all power in his hand. He didn't have to do that. Conquered death, hell, and the grave. He did not have to do that. So now, because he lives, not only do we not have to pay for our sin debt, but we have eternal life. I didn't, we didn't ask for that. We just didn't want eternal death. But what we have now is because God did that according to his riches. And we'll, let's look at that next Sunday, according to his riches and grace. And right now, God is talking about what he's doing back to you according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, rewarding you, adding fruit to your account based upon the sacrifice that you make. So my God, but my God, you put that conjunction in, but my God, because it looked like that was the end of the road for you. Look like that's when you toss in the towel. Looks like that's when you say wave the white flag, but no, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So until next time, children of God, keep living, keep sacrificing, keep serving, even when you're running out. Because when you run on E and you give that last need to the things of God and whatever that thing is, could be your energy, could be your, your, your sleep, your, your, your resources, some money, some time, whatever the case may be. When you find yourself being exhausted for the things of God, understand what Paul said to the people of God who make these sacrifices, but my God, shall supply, fill them up. He should fill it up to the full. All your need, all of them, all your need, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. May God richly bless you all. Seems nobody goes with you. The life's feeling kind of dry. And you're just a crane, get your high. But everywhere that you go, you keep hitting.